welcome, welcome to the How Humans Work podcast. I am your host, Jeff Z, Jeffrey Salaji. So glad to have you here. Season one is afoot, and we are kicking it off by exploring not just human nature, but particularly the facet of fathers and fathering, the impact and the influence they have on the lives of my guests. Hold tight, stay tuned, and listen in because we are about to journey into a series of conversations. It is incredible. Let's get into it. Let's get started. Here we go. People, friends, listeners, I want to thank you so much for those of you who've been following season one, Finding Fathers on the How Humans Work podcast. This is Jeff Z coming to you from Echo Summit at the Headwaters Cabin tonight. And it's kind of fitting to be doing a season ending episode here because it was last June, almost a year ago, that the idea of doing a podcast on fathers first came to me. I was about six miles from here at a little place called Angora Twin Lakes, a really beautiful, a beautiful spot. It's also fitting to be here because part of my childhood was living in South Lake Tahoe. And those were some good and hard years. And so I have lots of personal memories in this particular ecology. So these shows have been far more than I ever imagined. The journey of, of the technology is one thing. And aside from those uh, wind up moments, the conversations themselves, the opportunity to, you know, talk with nine, 10 people in depth around their fathers really moved me. And, and what happened is naturally, I thought a lot about my own father and my own fathering. And I think that I got closer to both along the way. I got closer to something essential. Like I remember the hard things in me and I remember the hard things in my father. But opening the door to fatherhood itself and listening to father stories, I started to become a better father. I started to see my role and my impact and the importance of my impact in a clearer way. And I got to look past some of the harder moments, some of which I shared in some of the episodes with my own dad and, and feel and remember and see some things. So I thought I would, I would tell a couple stories um, that would reflect some of my own father, Bill, Bill Salaji. Bill was born in LA in 1944, on December 17th, a wood monkey, for those of you into Chinese astrology. And he was the second child to my grandfather and my my grandmother. And uh, he grew up in L.A. And he grew up in Burbank, grew up in Glendale. And he he met my mom pretty young. They started dating when they were 16 and 14. And my dad, you know, I think... I think my dad had high expectations on him and had high expectations for himself. I remember him telling me a story and one of the few times we had one to one time, we were in Big Sur camping and he told me about this emotional experience he had where he was just overwhelmed and he didn't know what was happening to him. And that was interesting because I saw in that moment that there wasn't a lot of emotional know-how. He didn't grow up with a lot of emotional know-how. So, you know, I think he had, so he was born in 44. My brother was born in 66. So by the time he was 22, he had his first son. And, you know, he went to work. He didn't go to college. He didn't go to Vietnam. And I think both those things from what I understand, troubled him. And uh, by the time he was 30-something, he had four boys. I was the third. And the stories I think that would be useful to tell are the time that I, I was jumping on a bunk bed with my brother. I must have been four. And I fell 
between the wall and the wood frame of the bunk bed and was pretty upset, pretty felt pretty hurt. And so uh, my dad, he took me to the hospital. And by the time we got to the hospital, I was much more okay than I was when I first was injured. We just sat there in the waiting area and we watched people together and he talked to me in this soft, loving voice. My dad was really good that way. My dad was really good with adversity and connecting with people. He ha- he definitely had, in ways, a magic about him that was complemented by an extreme intensity as well. The other story I wanted to share today is one about a hard thing that happened in South Lake Tahoe. It must have been early 80s, but there was a young man who was working at a gas... He wasn't even a man. He was a kid. He was a teenager who was working at a gas station. And apparently the gas station was robbed, and the way they tied the kid up suffocated him. And so he ended up dying. And I remember so very clearly how deeply upset, angry my father was about this crime this this terrible needless senseless crime and so every time i drive into south lake tahoe i i go past that gas station and i i just i think about that story that moment just burned into my memory and in a large part because of how my dad felt how you know his sense of his sense of justice was strong not always accurate, but was very strong. I'd forgotten this until my mom had told me the other day in a conversation, he started an anonymous tip fund to see if they couldn't find who was responsible for this. And he went around, my mom reminded me and did lots of talks, got local businesses to donate, created a fund. And apparently that same organization that same process is still alive today so that would be 40 some years and it's kind of cool to think of my dad that way there's lots of ways i think about my dad his work effort his drive his mixed dynamics around you know fathering with uh, authoritative times tyrant but also loving funny um inquisitive, curious, perceptive, uh, direct, no nonsense. So, you know, those are a few ways I would describe who my father was in the world. And I think it's cool. I think, I think it's cool. I think, I think, you know, because there was pain in, in the way our family story happened and choices my dad made as a father and dynamics he had with my mom that that there's been a a strong disappointment a strong hurt um which has been more of the louder parts of my memory but drop it into these conversations with my guest this season has really given me moments to pause and remember some of the quieter, less, you know, traumatic, less um, glaring situations of my, my relationship with my dad. So yeah, he was, he was a good man. And unfortunately he died far too young. He was 58. And those, those six days I spent with him and some of my siblings on his way out, um, are some of the most important for me that I had with him in my life. You know, being there in the hospital in Scottsdale as he was dealing with the consequences of a very serious heart attack and then the medical interventions that came along with that. You know, he he, <laughs> he still had a sense of humor then. You know, I'm laughing because I remember... 
I was a, a student of Chinese medicine and uh, at that time and and he was very supportive of that choice in my life and I appreciate that and he was suffering he was having trouble breathing his chest was tight he couldn't he couldn't be always comfortable so I started to you know my dad's a hunter my dad was a hunter my dad was into you know conservative politics and real estate and cars right so there we are i'm I'm sitting by his bed in the hospital i start having him sound to kind of let his lungs and his chest relax to kind of get some of the using sound as kind of healing um as as support um, for his discomfort and he, <laughs> he starts oming and he, he just the look he gave you know that 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 very sly corner of the eye, smile, grin. Very sweet to remember that right now. Yeah, those were some of the last moments I had. It was very beautiful to say goodbye to him, to look him in the eye, and to to witness his passing. And one of the one of the amazing things about his passing that I also think that's worth telling, and probably. God, maybe the completion of my relationship with him. So my grandfather died when I was 10. He was buried on my 10th birthday. And my dad was in the hospital with him, and he died of a heart attack. And my dad told me that he felt his 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 my grandfather's spirit come into him when he died. So fast forward, what, 21 years later, and... I'm sitting by my dad's bedside wondering, is his spirit going to come into my hand when I'm holding his hand? What's going to happen here, you know? And we're, it's uh, April 24th, 2003, and his breathing slows, and he's 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 medicated at that point. He can't have surgery. There's nothing he can do at that point. So so he he, he finally passes. And um, honestly, beautiful, totally beautiful just to witness, um, to have him be free of his suffering, to be present to the last moments of his life. And so I'm standing there and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I feel my dad spirit come into my chest like you know I'd been thinking like oh he's holding his hand is you know it's like you feel it in your hand all of a sudden I feel this presence oh, I can't even like there's no weight to it right it's just it's not light it's it's a, a beautiful energy and I couldn't tell honestly filled me up filled up my lungs it wasn't heart it was all lungs it filled my lungs up it was like not physical lungs but the the lung space and i can't tell if he dissolved into me or moved through me but i just just started weeping and you know one of my brothers starts holding me and and uh it's not one of those things that's easy to describe because, you know, it's just one of those things that, that happened and it was an amazing moment. And and then it passed. And um, it was a beautiful weaving of time. It was a beautiful weaving of time, of threads. and And it was a for lack of a better word, a spiritual experience. Nothing I've ever had since so far. And and later, so it was kind of a completion, and I was really happy, but then I grieved, you know, then I had to grieve. And I, I probably cycled through those moments three, four dozen times over the next few weeks, and at a certain point I had to realize that my dad only... He only died once, and so, you know, as much as grieving him repetitively was helping me feel close to him, I didn't need to. And 
um, later that year I got married and I was, it was amazing cause I had a dream and the dream was my dad was wearing this beautiful linen suit, like white linen suit. And, um, and he was good. So that's, that's 18 years on, I think it's 18 years. Yeah. We're 18 years on now. And, um, yeah, fathers, we need them. We need good fathers for sure in this world. And I'm sure we can all get behind that. You know, my dad was multifaceted. I am too. And it's good to remember. It's good to remember you, dad. It's good to, good to be talking about fathers. It's good to see your impact. It's good to think about my impact. And it's been really super special to bear witness and listen and be that person who gets to be curious and hear the beautiful stories. There was one other thing I wanted to share. It's a poem. And this poem was hanging out on a little blue medical script. So when I ordered those blue ones years ago, God, it must have been must be 15 years old at least. So I'm going to read that poem. And I, when I was a young man, I wanted to be a poet. I wanted to have a life as a poet. And when I found myself going into Chinese medicine, um, I was, I was, it was hard. It was a hard thing to let go of. Um, poetry's never really stopped. Uh, it just happens less often than it did when I was younger. But it's kind of funny that, um, I think it was William Carlos Williams was an MD who wrote poetry. So I always kind of took that as a possibility, but it never, it never resonated for me. In any case, here's a poem written on a medical script and it's completely topical. And I think threads nicely into what's happened this year. When will the father stand again in beatific light? When will there be songs of his warm arms, furry and sinewed, and of his blessed heart, clinging not to corrupt power, rather, instead, endeavoring toward fostering the little out of love for the great? So thank you again to everybody who's walked this road with me. Things to come. Uh, I'm not sure where the next the next episodes are going to find their way in. I have different feelings and different ideas, but I feel that I found out something about myself. I mean, I, I kind of knew I liked to talk, but I really like to talk and I really like to listen and I really like to tell people what I hear. And so that's been a great discovery to to have a place where I could do that and share that and get better at it. So, so grateful, super grateful for this season and the, the, the doors that have opened and the stories that have been told. And I invite you to hang tight, stick with me. Let's see where this goes. Let's keep exploring the nature of you know, the human experience you know, shows will be coming out definitely twice a month. I'm committing to that and more very soon. Many blessings. Lots of love, lots of health, lots of spirit. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please follow us on your favorite streaming platform and share our podcast with your community and friends. All music is composed by the incredible Chase Jackson at chasejacksonmusic.com. To learn more about this show, our guest, as well as Jeffrey and his work helping people find peace with their human nature, go to howhumanswork.us.com.